Hi, my name is Heather, and today I'm going to show you how to add color to your SVG in Affinity Designer 2 for the iPad. I'm starting out with the giraffe that I made as a single color SVG. If you haven't watched that video yet, you'll want to go back and watch it because you'll need to start with that file to make your colored file. First, I just want to give you an overview of how we're going to implement the colors in this SVG. One way that we could do it, and that I know some people have done it, is where we keep the outline and then we create shapes of different colors to go inside those outlines. However, I don't prefer doing it that way because I found that everything doesn't always match up exactly, especially when doing iron-on, since there can be shrinkage and there can be gaps between the fill and the stroke. If you want a more detailed explanation, check out my video that I'll link in the card that explains the best way to do outlines in an SVG. The way I like to do it is to have one solid black silhouette as the base layer, and then all the colored pieces will sit on top of that. Then you don't have to worry about having any gaps, even if there's shrinkage. So that's the way we're going to do it in this video. We're gonna start with our single color SVG that we made in the last video. And note that this is the final SVG that we brought into Design Space. So if I grab my Node Select tool, and then I click on the giraffe, you'll see that there's no lines here, it's all shapes. So it's all an outlined shape, and that is the one that you'll need for this video. So we're gonna take that, and we're gonna grab our select tool, and we're going to grab everything, and then I'm gonna click the three dots up here and do copy. Now we can go back to the first screen of Affinity Designer 2, and we're going to create a new document, so we're gonna click new, new from clipboard. This just created a new document with that single color SVG that we copied. Now we can just resize this a little bit smaller so that we have a little bit of extra room in here, but when we try to resize it, as you can see, it's gonna get all stretched. So we would want to hold down shift to make it constrain the proportions. And we can do that using this little circle right here. So if we click on this circle, and then click the up arrow that shows up. That's going to constrain the proportions, and now when we resize it, it keeps the proportions and it doesn't stretch it. And then we can just position it to the center of the screen. And then I will click on the up arrow again to turn it off. Now we're going to create a colored rectangle, and then we're basically gonna use the black outline to kind of cut it out like a cookie cutter. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool right here and I'm going to select a color by clicking on this circle right here. And I'm gonna pick orange because I figure there's gonna be some orange in a giraffe. And then I'll hide the color palette and I'll just create my square. Now I wanna send my square to the back and then that way we can see both shapes. So I'm just going to grab my select tool and I'll click this little square right here that has the three shapes on it, and I'll do move to back. Now I can grab my select tool and select everything, and I'm gonna click this button that has the two shapes together, and then I'm going to do divide, and that's going to do the cookie cutter. So now if I click outside of it, and then I can grab the outside right here and delete it, but then you'll notice that his ear is gone, and that's because if we zoom in, these lines aren't actually connecting, so we will need to fix that. So let's do undo, and let's actually show our layers panel, because then we can tell how far we've gone back. So we're just gonna click undo until we have the rectangle and the giraffe. And then let's hide the layers panel. And I'm gonna grab my node select tool, and I'm just going to grab these nodes and pull them so that they overlap. And now notice that when they overlap, they actually create a hole. We can fix that by clicking the three dots, and where it says fill mode, we're gonna change it from alternate to winding. 
So click winding and now you'll see that it's solid. Now that we fix that, we can do this over again. So we're going to select everything and we're gonna to go to that operations menu with the two shapes and we will do divide again. And now we can click outside of it and grab the outside piece and delete. And now you'll see that we have all of the parts of the giraffe filled in. The next step is to look at the layers panel. So click on the layers panel button right here and we're gonna find any weird little pieces and delete them. When you're creating an SVG in Affinity Designer 2, you might find that you have some weird little pieces that are created. It's just because nothing's perfect in life and sometimes you'll just have some little weird pieces. <laughs> if you click on one and zoom in, then you'll be able to see what the piece is. But really, if we don't zoom in, if we know that it's that tiny, then it's not gonna be a real piece that we need. So when you have the piece selected and it's just that little piece right there, we can just click delete. We have this piece right here, which you can see it's down here and we can't even really see what it is, it's so tiny. So we're just going to delete that and this one and just go through and do that for all of them. But make sure you're keeping an eye on it because like this is a real piece. This is his little nostril. And you can see this one right here is his inside of his ear, and this is the outside of his ear. And if you want to make it even more obvious, you can click the node select tool, and then you can really see all of the nodes that surround it. So go ahead and delete all those pieces. After we finish that, we're going to grab all of our colored pieces, and we want to put them on their own layer. So we can do that by just hiding the black pieces. So I just have these two black ones up here and I'm just gonna click the dot next to it. And now they're hidden. Now I can create a new layer by clicking the plus sign up here and I'm gonna do vector layer. Now we're going to select everything so that we have all of the colored pieces. And in the layers panel, we can just click and drag them up onto layer one. And now we have all of the colored pieces in one layer and you'll see why that's important later on. Now, if you want, we can show the black layer while we're adding colors to our pieces, but either way, it's up to you. Sometimes it's easier to have it hidden so that you don't accidentally select it. But I'm going to go ahead and color all of my pieces now. So I'm going to grab his body and then I'll go up to this colored circle here and I'm gonna make it more of like a yellow color and then I also need to make this part up here the same color as his body. And the cool thing is that it puts your recent colors in this part right here that says recent colors. So I can just click the yellow right there. And then I'll also do his ear. For his little hooves, I'm gonna make those brown. And I'll do the inside of his ear and his little snout. And then we can do his hat. Now we have all of our colors set, and now we can deal with our black part of the file. So if we go to the layers panel, then remember we put all of those colored pieces on one layer. So for right now, let's just collapse that layer. So we're gonna click this little down arrow here, and we're gonna hide it. So we're gonna click that dot, and all that we have left shown is the black. So let's grab all of the black, and then we're going to first combine them because as you can see, we have two different pieces for the black. We want it to be one shape. So with the select tool, we're gonna go to our operations menu and we're gonna do add. So now if we look at the layers panel, this is one shape. The next step is that we're going to remove the holes. So if we click our three dots up here, you'll see that we have fill holes right here and we're just gonna click that. That just fills all your holes and now we just have one nice silhouette here. So that's gonna be our first layer and then we can go ahead and show our colored layers now. Now we have all of our colored pieces and they will sit on top of our silhouette. Next, we need to combine everything that is the same color, and I like to do that because the way that it gets cut on the Cricut mat is that if you have all of the pieces of the same color as an object, then it's going to lay them out in the right orientation, 
instead of just having all these random shapes sitting next to each other in some random order. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to select one item of one color, and then we can go up here where it says select same and click on same and do fill color. So now all of the orange pieces are selected and we can go up here to the operations menu and do add. And now if we go to our layers panel, then we'll see that these are all combined into one object. For the ones that are only like a couple of pieces, like the pink, we only have two pieces that are pink. We can just do it straight from here. So I have this one already selected and then I can just swipe right on the one underneath it. And we have both pink ones selected. So we can go up here and do add. And now our two pink pieces are combined and we can do the same thing with the blue. And we do have quite a few yellow pieces. So let's click on yellow and we'll do select same fill color. And then we can see that all the yellow ones are selected here. So we'll go to operations and do add. Lastly, we have our browns. So we can select one of the brown pieces and do select same fill color, go to operations and add. And now from our layers panel, you can see that each of the colors is its own object here. The next thing we're going to do, just so that everything shows up in the right spot on the Cricut Design Space Canvas, is that we're going to select everything and we're gonna click the three dots and do group. So now these are grouped together and that'll make sure that they show up in the right spot in relation to each other on the Cricut Design Space Canvas. And you can also see that they're on the same layer now so we can click on the top layer and we can just delete it because we don't have anything on it. Now we're all ready to export this for Cricut Design Space. Let's go up here and we're going to click the three lines, export, and we're going to make sure SVG is selected, give it a name. One thing that's important so that it doesn't show up really tiny in Cricut Design Space is that we're going to Turn off set view box. So I'm going to click that so that it's off. And now we can click OK. And then save. And now we can go to Cricut Design Space and test our file. So I'm in Cricut Design Space in a new project here. And I'm going to click upload. And I'll do browse files. And I'll find my giraffe color, give it a name. So here's our giraffe in Design Space. And we can go to the Layers panel. And here we can see all of our little layers with our different colors. And you can turn them off and on to see them. Now we are done and this is ready to share with others. You can sell it online or you can use it to make something for yourself. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments, or as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. Stay tuned for the next video where we will add text to our SVG. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.